with the exchange of blood we are still connected. When the dragon tastes your blood, the dragon will find you wherever you are. The dragon will know wherever you are. Use the pentagram and let the pentagram show you the way to the dragon, so that the dragon as well can know and taste who you are. Now that sounds a little bit dark, doesn't it? Of course. Let me explain this to you. Um, in the side of the, dra the dragon's path, you can do a lot of uh, blood rituals, blood ceremonies. And um, in these blood rituals that you do, sometimes your blood that is inside of your veins, the blood that is being used, is only being um, used so that your dragon would find you. And in order to do so, they need to uh, sometimes, sometimes have yeah, the blood inside of them but not to eat it, of course, not because they feed it with your blood, but because they need your taste. And your taste is very unique. When, um, when the dragon, for example, knows where you are, it means that they know the smell of your blood. Then the dragon, and of course, I, I draw a pentagram. A pentagram is also being used to track down the dragon to, because it points to every direction. So that, uh, with, with, with the touch of your blood, for example, it knows that you want to find the dragon. But it, of course, it doesn't find your specific dragon. It just wants to find dragon energy nearby. But um, in itself, and that is what I came to know a lot, a lot later, of course. Um, you know, I sometimes had the feeling that my dragon was very close by. And when, when I did, I had the feeling that uh, my dragon, uh, he could smell the blood inside of me. And, and but once I did my first ritual with, with, uh, with blood, I came to find out that my dragon recognizes the smell, recognizes the, the taste of blood. You, it, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's your life force and the dragon recognizes this. And with tasting it, your dragon knows where you are. And that is just uh, something that reminds me a lot of what people used to say in the ancient times. In the ancient times, the dragon was being feared and the dragon was um, still to this day, of course, that you have to push the dragon away by many rituals. But uh, that is because they are very much demonized because of this. Back in the day, they thought that the, the dragon, of course, <laughs> that is a fact, that uh, vampires, that there was some vampires that could shapeshift inside of other beings. There was even a drawing made with uh, a, a dragon that was actually a vampire, a vampire with the face of that of a woman that changed her face in that of a woman before it was a uh, face of the dragon, then it was a face of the woman and it was biting the man. But this man was seduced, the man was seduced by this a uh, dragon that later turned out to be the vampire. And uh, because of this, I came to understand that there were dragon witch witches back in the day. Back in the day, there were dragon witches that I came to understand. Um, and uh, the no, <laughs> because only dragon witches and witches of the dragon's path, uh, they are the only ones who use blood magic, blood energies to track down the dragon. Because you are trying, you are, you are trying to use your blood to know where your dragons are. And that is also something that I recommend if you are not afraid of a little pinch, that you are just using your, your blood so that you know which direction you have to look for, for your, for not your dragon, but for dragon energy. But the dragon can use this as well. And this is actually a story that I actually was uh, not sure of, of if I have to share this because but I, I came to understand as well that this could be very interesting that you can um, that you you should know that your dragon is very close to you besides anyone else your dragon is the only one actually that uh, your dragon is actually only trying to find you and no one else only you so you are very recognizable for them but in order to do so they need to taste and you need you to know your life force and there is no much more power than inside of your blood and so i came to understand as well inside of rituals like this uh, uh, also at night your dragon knows the smell of you because of your blood because of what is going inside of your veins because of your soul as well of course your spirit but as well as your 
Your blood that is touching your spirit. Your blood is completely over your life force. And it's knowing where you are. It's actually calling out for your dragon. Your blood is calling out for your dragon. And sometimes when you... <laughs> and, and that is also something that I did uh, a long time ago. And this just was actually saying that I was, that was right. Um, I was saying inside of a ritual, so let the dragon come to me. So the, tr the dragon can have my blood, just like a vampire would suck actually your blood inside of the stories. But this is something volunteers, this is something that I want, something that I desire. Because I came to realize that my, my, the blood is something that is smelling, it's smelling from far away. So that I can, came to understand as well that the dragon can come to me if I just let myself open to be, yeah. It, this won't hurt once once the dragon comes to you, of course. This won't, won't hurt at all, but I came to understand as well that the dragon is smelling a lot of your neck and your pulse and those places in your, in, inside of your body where your, your, where your blood is very, very wild and very strong. Uh, and uh, so that the dragon smells this a lot. When your dragon comes to you, you have to notice that your dragon can smell you a lot. I mean that they go all around you, all to detect you, that it's really you. Because they can look into your soul, but they can also, they also want to, to have your, your smell. The smell of the draconic energy that lives within you. And I have to even go further. Once this happens and your dragon, <laughs> your dragon gives you this bite that you'd actually want. And I... I've seen this and this might discredit the dragon, but it shouldn't be at all because this was a very good feeling once the dragon did this. Once the dragon did this, this, this didn't hurt at all. I was not afraid uh, of, of this at all. But when your dragon does this, it means that your draconic energy will be even more opened. Just like in the stories and of, uh, of vampires, when vampires bite you, you become a vampire yourself. And when, uh, when your blood is being... Yeah, because they want to feed from your blood. Because they, most of the time they are lured and they are seduced by the eyes of the vampire. And that is, <laughs> that is so a bit like yeah, how it is with the dragon in the dragon spirits. And the dragon spirits themselves that you are... Yeah, not that you are seduced because against your will, but because you are connected with your dragon and you are willing to grow and you are willing to be one with the dragon. <coughs> and in doing so, you offer your own blood. That is also what you do sometimes inside of rituals, draconic rituals, in order to find a dragon. But actually what I find out is that the most strongest thing of all is to say to your dragon to come to you, to come with you, and to say that, that they can have a bit of your blood. That is no, mat no, no much more than this, of course. But if you say this to the dragon, and if you want this, then do it with pure desire, because your dragon will not do anything if you are doubting. But I was saying this with real desire and surrender. So I was... I was actually expecting nothing until this night, this night that the dragon was, well, I, I could see the dragon whenever, whenever I could even feel, I could see and I could know where, what, what, what was going on. And I was preparing myself for this change because this is a lot of change, of course. Once, once the dragon does this, your draconic energy will open up so much so that it won't go back anymore. So, in, like I said, the dragon's path and whatever you are doing as a dragon witch, you don't have to be afraid of change. Change is a part of it. And so when the dragon does this, it means a lot of change as well, a rapid change. Not at, at the time, at the moment, but it will evolve eventually. But in uh, but very, very quick, very, 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 very fast. And it will be in, of course, if you can feel this a bit in your memory. And your blood is not being eaten by the dragon. Of course, not like a vampire is and being eaten just because they need to feed. It's more than, it's more like to know how you taste, to know where you are and to know how your smell is. 
to know where they have to look, because the dragon in itself doesn't always know where to look. They have to look inside of the void, inside of the astral plane, it's endless place. And of course, because of your dragon connection, they have an idea where to look, but not always. And in order to do so, in order that they are, that they can come quicker to you, that they, uh, come, that they can uh, smell you, that they can taste you, is to offer up a little bit of yourself, because your blood is your life force. And with doing so, they open up a lot more draconic energy within you. So in, in a way, in a way, it is a dragon vampire, you can say. Um, your dragon is a bit like a vampire, but in a good way. It's not a villain, and that is why I was wondering if I could say this, not to discredit the dragon or, or something like this, but you have to give... Uh, yeah, your trust as well, but of course you have to give your permission to do so. Your permission and entire, your entire self, your complete self, surrender, of course, to the dragon. Once they come to you, it, it, has, to be, it has to be with your desire and your free will. If you want to be open, of course. If you want, just, it won't hurt once they do this. It will look like some kind of a dream, a dream state whenever they are doing something like this. But in a moment you might feel a bit helpless when they do this. But in fact it's all in order to find you and know where you are. That is the entire point of being a dragon witch. To, this might have been a bit of yeah, a risk that I had to take. I didn't know what the dragon really wanted with this. But later on I came to know and understand as I could feel the dragon much stronger and I could feel my own draconic energy much growing much stronger uh, that I could uh, that I knew that the, uh, the blood inside of the dragon that the dragon took to know our taste it's not um, it's not a part of them it's still a part of yourself your blood lives on inside of your dragon your blood lives on wherever they are inside of the dragon realm your blood is not consumed. Your blood still lives on and can still feel the beating of your heart alongside with the beating of the heart of your dragon. And that is a beautiful thing, isn't it? To be one with the dragon. Of course, you can call them vampire dragons or dragon vampires, but in fact, it's not a vil they are not the villain. In a, in a way, you might, uh, you might see it as actually a surrender of love and connection.